So opening up a terminal here, the first thing we are going to need to check is that we have Rosetta installed. And you can do that with this command here, which is sudo software update dash dash install Rosetta dash dash agree to license. I believe I already have this set up, but I will put in my password here. And you can see that that is now updated and installed. Rosetta will do some translation for apps that contain the Intel based instructions and it'll let them run on Apple Silicon. So this is probably something that you'll have to install not just for Flutter, but for a few other things potentially as well. As time goes on, things will just be natively working for the M1 chip and you won't need to use this at all. But currently there is still a little bit of a need for that. Next, we can head on over to the get started Flutter install Mac OS and actually download Flutter Mac OS 2.8. They recommend that on the M1 you do at least version 2.5, but 2.8 is good for me. It's the, it's the current stable version. I don't actually really expect this install process to be any different than on Intel or too difficult, but I figured since I haven't done it yet on this M1 machine, if there is any issues that I run into, at least I have them documented here and maybe it helps someone else out. All right, and that's finished downloading. So we're going to unzip it into the directory that we're in. I'm in my code directory, so I will just be using that. And you can see this is trying to access my downloads folder. I'll hit OK. So that will move that into my code directory here. And once that's done, you'll see that you would now have the flutter path, but we don't necessarily need to go into there now. So that's all set up. The next step would be to add that to your path. And you can see this command here says it will work just for the current terminal. We want this always to be available in our path. So what we do want to get is the current directory of this. So if you do PWD, you can get the current directory and that is essentially what this is going to do. And then we want to add flutter bin to the end of that. So it's essentially going to be this and then Flutter bin. I'm using ZSH, which if you scroll down to update path, it kind of gives you instructions for if you have a bash profile. Bash is no longer used by default on the Mac. You should have a ZSH RC already. And let's go ahead and open a new tab here and we'll go back to our root directory. And if we do LS minus LA, you can see I do have that ZSH RC. So to edit that, we can use any editor we want. I'll just go ahead and use Atom for this, and this will open up that file in Atom. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is copy this export here and paste it anywhere in this file. I'll just drop it in right here. And you can see this part right here does need to be changed. So it's looking for the path of our Flutter Git directory. That is going to be that path that we were looking at right here. So it's going to be this. And then additionally, we need to tack on the flutter bin. Or I suppose bin is already there, so we just need flutter. And if we save that, we should be good. Now, here's how we can test this. If you look again, you can test this with which flutter. So if you run that, you'll see Flutter is not found. That's expected because when you make changes to the ZSH, you do need to restart the terminal. So if we close out that, again, this is saved. We can now open up a new terminal and type which Flutter again. And you can see now that Flutter route is there. So that's good. Now this is in our path correctly. So now we can start running these Flutter commands. We'll clear this out and just run Flutter Doctor. And Flutter Doctor will essentially tell us what we still need to set up. There we go, Flutter Doctor has given us some output. You can see our Flutter version is good. We're on that version 2.8. Our Android tool chain is not quite set up and neither is our Xcode, but then everything else looks all right. So we can start with Android here and it's unable to locate the Android SDK. We can install Android Studio from here and the first launch will assist us in installing the Android SDK. I have installed Android Studio, so I'm just gonna go ahead and open that now. And I'm going to choose Do Not Import Settings and click OK. And I'm gonna choose Don't Send There. So the Android Studio Welcome Wizard is here. And we can begin by clicking Next. We'll walk through all of this, choose the type of setup you want for Android Studio. We're just gonna do Standard here. I'll stick with the dark theme now. And here are those Android SDKs that are missing. So if we 
click finish here. Those are gonna get installed. All right, and once that finishes here, we'll just click finish. And now we're in the Android Studio, we create a new project. So now we have Android Studio installed. If we run Flutter Doctor again, you can see we just get a new error now. So now our command line tools are erroring and the Android license is erroring, but we no longer have that SDK error as we were seeing before. So if we go into here and click more actions, we can go to the SDK manager and then we can click on the SDK tools. And right here we can see the SDK command line tools are not installed. So we're going to go ahead and check that box and then click apply. This will prompt us that the SDK command line tools are now going to be installed, so we can click OK there. And you can read through this license and accept and hit next. And once that says done, you can click the finish here. So now the SDK command line tools should be there, so we can click OK on that. And let's go ahead and run our Flutter Doctor one more time here. So that looks good. Now we can just accept the Android license by running Flutter Doctor Android license. And it asks us if we want to review it. I'm just going to hit yes to this and yes again. You can read through this, but I'm just going to accept everything. And now if we run Flutter Doctor one more time, our Android tool chain is now set up. So now we can move on to the Xcode one. So definitely make sure that Xcode is installed and you're able to open it. That is the first step. Next, we can configure the Xcode command line tools with this command. So it's Xcode select and then switch and application Xcode app contents developer. And then we're going to add this command sudo Xcode build run first launch. And lastly, we will run the sudo Xcode build license, which is similar to the Android one. It's just the software license. And I will agree to that. If we run Flutter Doctor again, we still have that same issue with the Cocoa Pods. To fix this, we can actually just install Cocoa Pods so we can use sudo gym install cocoa pods for this and once that's complete we can clear this and run flutter doctor again this time we have no issues so that's a good sign next we go back into android studio and click on plugins and we're going to look for the flutter plugin and go ahead and install that and we'll go ahead and accept and install and now we can restart the ide so after relaunching android studio we have the option for a new flutter project here and that's one way but i'm going to go through the terminal here so in my code directory i'm going to type flutter create m1 test app and now i can change the directory to that m1 test app and then call flutter run. And it looks like by default, it's gonna try and launch this on Chrome. And likely that's just because I don't have either simulators running yet. So it opens that up in a Chrome window here. And it is just that default flutter test app where you can increment the counter there. So that looks good. Now let's go ahead and get this to run on iOS and Android. Back in Android Studio, we can now open that new project that we created. So that loads up our project and we now can open a iOS simulator, for example, and run the same app from within here. And if we change this up here to the project view, we do get all of our Dart files here with main.dart and that test app. So this is now running the build. And there we go. It's running correctly on our iOS app. And we can also run this on Android. And there you have it. We're now fully set up with Flutter on our M1 Mac. And you already saw it works with Android, iOS, and also the web. Hopefully you found this video useful. Let me know down in the comments how you are liking your M1 Mac. All right, ciao for now.